Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, High Throughput qPCR Microfluidics Technology with Singleplex Accuracy for Plant and Animal Genomics. I am Kaylee Bach with LabRoots, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. Today's educational web seminar is presented by LabRoots and brought to you by Standard BioTools. To learn more, visit standardbiotools.com. We encourage you to participate today by submitting any questions you may have during the presentation. To do so, simply type them into the Ask a Question box and click Send. We'll answer as many questions as we have time for at the end of the presentation. You may also submit any technical issues here as well if you have trouble seeing or hearing the presentation. I'd like to now welcome our speaker, Naveen Ramalingam, PhD, Senior Director of Assay Development at Standard BioTools. Naveen, you may now begin your presentation. Thanks for the nice introduction. Uh, thanks for joining the webinar today. My name is Naveen Ramalingam. I'm the Senior Director for Assay Development at Standard BioTools. So today I'm gonna to speak about how one can use a qPCR microfluidics technology for plant and animal genomics application with singleplex accuracy. So the agenda for today's meeting, I'm gonna start with the introduction to Standard BioTools technology and product. Following that, I'll speak about microfluidics technology and how we enable customers to use this for plant and animal genomics. After that, I'm gonna speak about our latest real-time high throughput qPCR platform called X9. Following that, I'll speak about few use cases, both in plant and animal genomics space. And finally, I'm gonna open the space for Q&A. So who's Standard Bio Tools? So we are a leading life science tools company. We are headquartered at South San Francisco. We have manufacturing sites in Singapore, Canada. We have over 5,000 publications so far, out of which 2,000 publication is on Biomark, which is our high throughput qPCR platform. We are ISO 13485 certified, meaning that all our products are developed under a quality management system. So to set the stage, uh, what is microfluidics? So in simple definition term, it means manipulation of liquids in small volumes, typically in nanoliter ranges. So what you see is one of our microfluidic cartridge on the left, and you have inlets where you can load samples and assays. In the center, the gray square is where the action happens. It's very hard to see what's happening in, with the naked eye, but if you put it under the microscope, what you see is in the inset, where there are small chambers for doing samples, and there are small chambers where you can park your assays. And these small chambers can be used for doing multiple biochemical reactions. So what we typically do is uh, we take any biochemical reaction, uh, we miniaturize that onto these kind of microfluidic cartridges. And that leads to multiple advantages. One is cost savings. Because we do reactions in small volumes, we save a lot on reagents and enzymes that's pretty expensive. Second, it's a simplified high throughput workflow. Uh, we can uh, jam in a lot of small reactions into a small square area. That leads to high throughput nature where you can test multiple samples or assays in one run. And the third is efficient reaction kinetics. Again, since reactions are done in small volumes, there's a high chance of enzyme meeting a substrate. So the reaction kinetics is pretty efficient in these kind of microfluidic devices. So this enables something called lab on a chip. So what you see here is a typical molecular biology lab where there are different steps in a process. For example, if you're doing a gene expression, you take a RNA, you convert that into cDNA, and then you do a, your qPCR assays. So there are multiple steps that happens in this process. And what we do is we take this, all these different steps, we integrate 
and automate all these steps onto this kind of microfluidic cartridges. And that leads to multiple advantages. The first one is being ease of workflow automation. So every, all these different steps can be automated on one microfluidic cartridge. The second is less chance of contamination. Uh, the way to think about this is all these chambers are closed reactors and they are not exposed to environment. So there's less chance of any reaction getting contaminated on these kind of microfluidic devices. And third is, uh, since uh, people have less chance of interacting with the different steps on these microfluidic cartridges, there's less chance of uh, human error. Okay, so to highlight the power of microfluidics and why this is so important, I'm gonna talk about a very nice use case here. And this is from Alaska Fish and Games, um, uh, where they've used our platform uh, for application which is very specific for sustainability. So what happens is in every uh, in every year during uh, uh, summer, uh, salmon uh, comes to this Bristol Bay for spawning. So there are close to 38 million types of salmon that they come to this uh, uh, bay for spawning. And what happens is they travel along the bay and there is a fishing grounds where the boats are parked and they are waiting for fishing these salmons. The challenge is the population has different variety, variety of salmon and there might be a variety which may be of limited quantity and there might be a variety which is very quite abundant in number. So uh, the challenge is not to uh, over harvest the limited species. So what they do is when they travel along this uh, coast in a particular place, they take uh, samples and they genotype the different stocks. Uh, there are close to nine different uh, stocks that is part of this uh, salmon. So uh, the first important thing is uh, the testing has to be high throughput nature because you need to genotype multiple samples in a location. And the second thing is the salmon takes about a week to reach the fishing grounds. So time is of essence here because you need to genotype all these samples and find out the distribution of population so that you can inform the uh, fisherman to go and fish in the right location so that they don't over harvest the less abundant um, population. So on the left, what you see is uh, they were using a 384 well plates to genotype this salmon before they switched to our platform. And what you see is they, in a typical fishing season, they used to use 1,300 uh, 384 well plates. And once they made a switch to our platform, what you see on the right, the same amount of data points can be generated using 54 chips. If you're just wondering, these are close to 0.5 million data points in one fishing season. So this highlights the power of Michael Friedrichs. One, you can do very high throughput nature. And second, you use very small volume of your master mixer. So you save a lot on your cost. So it's basically improving the productivity and sustainability of this whole process. So I'm gonna shift a bit of gear here today and uh, try to highlight why Michael Friedrichs is superior compared to a typical 96 well plate that's widely used for doing uh, qPCR assays. So what you see here on the left here is a plate-based PCR, which is a 96 well plate here. So if you are looking at 96 different targets, what you do is you can test against one sample and one sample goes into one well and you have one assays looking at that particular sample. So you can do one samples against 96 probes in a 96 well plate. There are ways to do multiplexing, but the number of colors that's available in a platform is limited. Uh, the best you can do is six colors, but beyond that, it becomes very challenging because you tend to see fluorescence bleed over where one signal might have an impact from um, another fl fluorescent signal. So uh, the plate-based uh, uh, workflow has limitations. Like I mentioned, it has maximum of six probes. And the second important uh, limitation is it's very difficult to optimize assays uh, because all the, the six assays perform in one uh, uh, reaction tube. So 
if one assay is not working good, uh, it may have, have an impact on the performance of other assays. So uh, the assays are not independent, so they have uh, impact on each other. And the third thing is uh, you have limited throughput, like one uh, 96 well plate can do only one sample. So in summary, the traditional multicolor multiplex has hard limits. And that's where we come in uh, with our Michael Friedrich uh, chip. And we try to address all the challenges that I just mentioned in the previous slide. So what we do with our Michael Friedrich cartridges, we can test 96 samples against 96 assays. So on the far right, you can see there are small squares that uh, you can use to load your samples. On the left, what you can see is there are again small inlets where you can load your uh, probes. So what we do is using Michael Friedrich uh, uh, cartridge, we test each 96 samples against 96 assays. So every sample will be assayed for 96 targets. So that leads to over 9,000 reactions from one Michael Friedrich cartridge. Whereas on the left, you get 96 data points, whereas on the, uh, on the right, you can get over 9,000 qPCR data points from one run. And the next important feature is the Michael Friedrich chip is quite scalable. So depending on your sample and asset needs, uh, you can pick different formats of chip that can save uh, your uh, reagents as well as your uh, uh, cost. So it's pretty flexible in terms of uh, samples and asset needs. And uh, like I mentioned, one uh, 96, uh, 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 sorry, uh, one, uh, Michael Friedrich uh, chip is equivalent to 100 of these 96 well plates. So essentially you can uh, trash all these 96 well plates and just use one Michael Friedrich cartridge to generate the similar amount of data points. So next I'm gonna speak about how we enable this multiplex throughput with a single plex accuracy. So what you see here is our Michael Friedrich cartridge and I'm showing is four unit chambers, which is shown in the inset here, uh, where you can see small chambers. So what we do is uh, take, take an example that you have a sample, which is shown on in a tube on the left, and you have multiple pathogens as shown in these different uh, shapes, uh, like a triangle, circle, square, or a pentagon. Uh, imagine these are different pathogens in your sample, and uh, we take the sample and we put it inside the Michael Friedrich cartridge, and then we spatially separate these pathogens into different small chambers. So we take a sample and we spatially separate uh, this sample so that we can then do uh, assays on these small chambers using a single color. And uh, that leads to a lot of different benefits. One, you can look at co-infection. Uh, which means you can, if you have samples that co infect with bacteria, virus, or parasites, all these different uh, pathogens can be assayed in one microfluidic uh, chip now. And the, the important uh, factor is uh, it's also single plex. Since we do uh, spatial separation, we can do single color. Uh, so we don't have to worry about uh, the typical limitation that I just spoke about in a multiplex uh, QPCR. The second important feature is the dynamic panel content. Uh, since due to single plex nature, if there is an assay which doesn't work, you can just take and then swap with a new assay uh, that you have already validated. Uh, so it's very easy to add or delete assays on this kind of panel uh, because you don't have to worry about one assay interfering with the performance of another assay. The second is the greatly simplified panel design. Uh, since these assays are done in single plex, uh, you don't have to worry about the interference, which I just mentioned about the multiplex QPCR. And the third important feature is the fast panel design, uh, which means uh, the assay conversion rate. Uh, most of the time, due to single plex nature, uh, most of the design works in the first uh, iteration. So uh, we don't have to uh, go and redesign assays uh, in a typical multiplex uh, QPCR. And the best part is you can use your own primers and probes. So if you already have assays that you already have uh, validated on a 96 well plate, 
uh, it's a plug and play. Uh, so you can use different format of assays as well. Uh, so if you have Tacman assays or Cybergreen assays, so any of those formats can be used in this kind of uh, microfluidic cartridges. So next I'm gonna play a short video to show how the microfluidic cartridges work, uh, to show how things are done under the hood. Uh, so I'm gonna um, uh, focus on the center of the chip uh, where the majority of the action happens. So what you see here is the microfluidic uh, uh, cartridge and uh, we load the assets as shown in the uh, yellow here. Uh, so either you can use an uh, eight channel pipetter or any standard liquid handling system should work with this kind of microfluidic cartridges. Uh, the size of these cartridges follows the SBS standard, meaning that any uh, liquid handler should be able to load uh, uh, samples and assets in these kind of uh, microfluidic cartridges. So on the left, what you see here is uh, it's uh, loading the assays. And once that's done, then you load your samples, which is shown on the right here. Uh, again, this can be done with a, a liquid handler. You load your samples with your master mix um, in the sample side. And once you load the samples and assay, it goes on to a system called X9, which loads the samples and assays into the chamber. And what you see here is a pre-amplification chamber where the samples are pre-amplified uh, for all the targets. And then it loads the assays from left to right, and the samples are loaded from top to bottom. So every sample will be mixed against each assays. So that's how the matrix of uh, QPCR is done. And once you mix the samples and assays in a unique fashion, then you thermocycle the chambers uh, where you can look at a particular target, um, either using a TACMAN assay or a cybergreen assays can be used uh, in these kind of devices. So just to give an idea what goes on to, onto the sample and assay side, uh, this is our 96.96 .96 integrated preamp uh, chip. Uh, the 96.96 .96 meaning uh, you can load 96 samples against 96 assays. So on the left, what you see is the assay setup. Uh, what you do is you take 2.5 microliters of your uh, 2x assay mix. Uh, the concentration is shown here. Um, and it can, uh, for different probes, if you're doing a SNP uh, assays, uh, you need uh, two colors for different alleles. Uh, it can be labeled with SAM or WIG. Uh, if you're doing a gene expression, it can be just one color using a fan. And then you uh, uh, add your GT uh, probe master mix with your assay uh, on this side, which is 2.5 microliters. So in total, you make five microliters of your assay mix, out of which you load four microliters into the small inlets that's shown on the left here. On the right, you load your sample mix. So what comprises the sample is uh, 2.75 microliters of your genomic DNA. And this can be at a lowest concentration, example, 2.5 nanograms per, per microliters. And then you load your preamp master mix with that, which is one microliters. And then it, you also have this uh, a pool of uh, preamp assays that goes on with your genomic DNA. So if you add all these different volumes, it comes out to five microliters, and out of which you again load only four microliters into these inlets. So just to uh, remind you, with this four microliters that's loaded onto this uh, inlet, you are getting 96 worth of data points from that small volume of sample that's being loaded. So that's very small volume that's being assayed on this microfluidic cartridge. So in summary, uh, to highlight the power of microfluidics, on the left, uh, you see the typical uh, 96 well plate. On the right, you see uh, the dynamic array IFC. Uh, so in terms of number of reactions, uh, we are 100 times more. Uh, we can generate over 9,000 qPCR data points. The second is the qPCR volume. Uh, in a 96 well plate, people typically run reactions in microliters volume, whereas we do uh, uh, reactions in nanoliters volume, which is 1,000 fold 
lower than a typical uh, 96 volt plug. And the final important thing is you save a lot on the pipetting tapes. Uh, so on the left, you see uh, for every well, you need to spend one uh, tape. Uh, that's 96 times 96. Whereas on the right, you can uh, you just need to do two times of 96 and then generate over 9,000 QPC data points. So you save a lot on your uh, tips and consumables as well. So with that, I will move on to our uh, X9 uh, instrument, which is our latest high throughput QPC platform that we recently launched. Okay, so this is a very highly elegant platform. It's a one uh, system where customers can load their chip um, and then based on the barcode on the chip, the system will uh, show up a particular script and then all the user start the run. All the parameters to run the uh, chip is uh, it's built in in the script. Uh, the customer don't have to worry about selecting different parameters on this kind of uh, system. Uh, the best uh, thing is it's a high throughput platform. So in a typical eight hour shift, you can generate over 46,000 data points uh, in, uh, in a typical eight hour shift. Um, the second important uh, factor, which I just spoke about in the last couple of slides, uh, you can look at up to 96 targets with a single plex accuracy, which is very important uh, as opposed to a multiplex uh, QPCR. Next couple of slides, I'm gonna share data to show how good is the system. So what you see here is the data on the precision of the system. So what we did is we took a, a, a gap DH uh, assay, we did a 16 point uh, two fold dilution series. And uh, what you see is the, the QPCR curve. Uh, and if you look at the replicates, they are all on top of each other. Uh, high precision. Uh, for doing gene expression assays. So in terms of reproducibility, uh, what you see here is so we took 96 replicates um, uh, of a cDNA sample and uh, uh, we ran across uh, the chip and at a mean CT of 12.4, uh, what you see is a standard deviation of 0 0.06, uh, which is pretty tight uh, compared to the industry standard. So if you remember, I mentioned the uh, chips are quite scalable. So depending on your sample and asset needs, you can pick different formats. So uh, this slide summarizes the different formats of the chip. Uh, so we have a chip 48.48 .48, where you can run 48 samples against 48 assays. Uh, so in total, uh, it's 2,304 data points. Um, in the center is the 96.96 .96 IFC, which I spoke about um, uh, in a couple of slides before. Uh, we also have a format that can do 192 samples against 24 assays. Uh, uh, that's 192.24, where in total you can generate over 4,608 uh, data points. Next, I'm going to move to uh, some of the use case application. I'm going to start with uh, plant genomics. So uh, for plant genomics, uh, if you look at the different uh, uh, areas, the first step starts with uh, pre-breeding, uh, where people do, typically do a DNA fingerprinting to identify different varieties of uh, plant species. The next step is to do a breeding step where based on a particular SNP marker or a, a simple sequence repeats, uh, people take uh, different varieties of uh, plants and then they do a breeding uh, based on a marker assisted uh, selection. And finally, uh, there are, there's a need for doing uh, quality control. And this is for seed purity testing um, uh, for a particular uh, line or variety, or uh, also checking a hybrid purity of the seed as well. And the second thing is also for seed lot testing. Uh, so in order, order to qualify a seed lot, uh, people generally do a SNP characterization uh, as well and uh, also pathogen detection. So if there is uh, uh, season, uh, people typically screen for these kind of pathogens um, in, a, in seed samples. So uh, what we offer is uh, uh, we touch upon all these different areas for plant uh, genomics. Uh, on the left, what you see is 
the requirement on the number of samples, uh, typically in the uh, pre-breeding step, uh, it's one to 10 samples because you are uh, trying to look for larger markers at that step. And once you know what you uh, uh, need, then in the breeding and quality control steps, it's typically hundreds to 10,000 of samples that's typically being used in those uh, steps. On the right is uh, the assays are actually inverted. Like I mentioned in pre-breeding, it's typically over 5,000 uh, markers. Whereas when you go to the breeding step, it's typically in the range of hundreds. And in uh, quality control, it's typically 10 to 20 uh, assays. And uh, we try to play in uh, all these different areas. Uh, for the high density uh, marker ID, uh, we have a sample prep uh, uh, portfolio where we can do NGS sample prep uh, for uh, uh, genome-wide association studies. Uh, we also whole genome sequencing um, uh, sample prep on our microfluidic cartridge as well. On the bottom, if there is a mid or, or low density need, uh, we have different uh, offerings. Uh, one is SNP genotyping using PCR. And second, if you have a targeted panel, we can do genotyping by sequencing as well because we have sample prep uh, capability on these kind of microfluidic uh, devices. Uh, we can also do gene expression as well as copy number variation analysis on these uh, different uh, chips. Uh, so if there is need uh, for plant genomics, uh, we are able to do those kind of applications. Uh, on our cartridge. So, uh, so next is to show how we cover the gamut of uh, different areas. Uh, on the left, you can see the, the the quality control is typical 10 to 20, and that's a sweet uh, uh, spot for qPCR, and our X9 platform uh, fits into that ni nice uh, place. And the second is the marker assisted uh, selection in the center where you typically look at uh, hundreds to thousand. And, uh, and these are typically a sample prep for NGS applications. And we are able to do uh, those kind of uh, sample prep on our microfluidic. Uh, so so in, uh, in terms of NGS workflow, uh, I'll briefly touch upon how one can do uh, sample prep on our microfluidic cartridge. Um, so they start with uh, extracted DNA or RNA samples from uh, leaves or seeds. And then if you're doing genotyping by sequencing, what you can do is um, you can uh, design uh, genotyping by sequencing panels. So we do offer a service uh, where you can let us know the targets and we can design the assays uh, for you. And once you have the assays made, then you can load your samples and assays into your uh, microfluidic cartridge and uh, you put it onto the system that can uh, generate automated library prep uh, for Illumina platforms. On the high density marker screening, we do have application where we can do uh, whole transcriptome sequencing. So we have microfluidic cartridge that can enrich mRNA onto, uh, uh, onto a uh, chamber, and then the system can automated, uh, uh, system can make automated library prep uh, for whole transcriptome analysis. So this is one of the use case from one of our customer in Korea. So what they have, they have done is they have looked at 192 uh, SNP markers uh, for uh, quantitative trait locus. Uh, they have been looking at crossbreeding between a large grain uh, variety versus a henarium, which is a high yield variety. Uh, so they have associated close to 192 uh, SNP markers for uh, for uh, novel rice varieties. So uh, with that, I'm going to touch a couple of cases in the animal health space. So so what we can offer in the animal health space is, for example, take an example where a cow falls sick. So uh, it can be for multiple uh, different reasons. The, the cow might be infected with bacteria, fungi, uh, virus, or nematodes. So what we can do is we can test multiple pathogens in one uh, test. So there's no need to uh, do any reflex testing uh, because in one test, you might be able to figure out what the uh, uh, cow is infected with. 
So this is a typical workflow um, that's used in the animal health uh, space. Uh, so the the DNA is extracted from a variety of sample types. Uh, it can be from blood, uh, fecal samples, um, urine, uh, or even soil samples. Uh, so once you extract the DNA, again, we do provide custom service to, for assay design. And once you have the assays, then you put your samples in the microfluidic cartridge, and then it goes on to our X9 real-time PCR system. And uh, we also have a very well user-friendly uh, software that can analyze uh, the presence or absence of pathogens in these kind of um, uh, samples. So this is a, ch a chip that I spoke about. So you can load uh, the 96 samples on the right, and then you can put your 96 assays. And then these are different format of chip that I just mentioned in uh, slides before. Uh, the Im one important thing is uh, with 30 minutes hands-on time, um, and the runtime with 2.5 hours, you can generate over uh, 9,216 data points. And like I mentioned, the chip is quite flexible. So depending on your assay types, you can either use a Tacman assay or a Casper assays or any uh, CyberGreen assays. Everything should work on, on this chip. So this is an example from one of our customer um, in uh, Korea again. So what they've done is they looked at uh, meat quality uh, for uh, for uh, bovine here. So they have looked at the multiple SNP markers and they try to identify SNPs that uh, looks at uh, the meat ratio, looking at back fat thickness, and that defines the quality of the meat and also quantity as well. And they were able to identify uh, unique SNP markers uh, that's tied up to the meat quality. So next couple of examples is on pathogen screening in um, animals. The first one is uh, from uh, uh, University of uh, Copenhagen. Uh, so in this particular um, um, publication, what they've done is they've screened for 11 different bacteria and virus in uh, um, bovine samples. So they've used nasal swabs as well as fecal samples from cows. And they've screened for multiple uh, pathogens. The target genes are shown in the center of the slide. And one important thing to note in the publication is they have highlighted that after they Im implemented our platform, they were able to save on the cost as well as time. Uh, also remember that you save a lot on uh, manpower as well as savings on consumer. The final example is for uh, porcine uh, samples. Again, this is from University of Copenhagen, uh, where they've used a panel of 18 uh, pathogens, including bacteria and virus. And uh, they've screened uh, samples using uh, oral fluid as well as nasal swabs from uh, pigs. And they've simultaneously looked at 18 different uh, pathogens, which is shown on the uh, bottom left. Uh, so again, uh, the reason why they used our platform is for cost savings and uh, as well as uh, uh, savings for uh, human manpower. So uh, in conclusion, uh, the microfluidics QPC technology uh, allows massive parallel reaction uh, with a single color with single plex accuracy. I hope I try to convince you guys that the technology is able to address all the challenges that's typically associated with a microfluidics uh, with a multiplex qPCR. The miniaturization leads to cost savings, simplified high throughput workflow, as well as efficient reaction kinetics. And with regards to uh, use cases, I've shown that uh, the microfluidics qPCR technology has been used for seed purity testing marker-assisted selection for plant genomics, as well as pathogen screening for animal genomics. With that, I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you. Well, thank you, Naveen, for your informative presentation. We will now start the live Q&A portion of the webinar. If you have a question you'd like to ask, please do so now. Just click on the Ask a Question box located on the far left of your screen, 
and we'll answer as many of your questions as we have time for. All right, so let's get started. Our first question here asks, what is the sensitivity of the system and is it comparable to traditional plate-based methods? Yes, uh, sure. So um, we have implemented the COVID-19 test onto our microfluidic platform. Uh, we also got FDA authorization for such a test. And for that particular test, our limit of detection was uh, 0.125 copies per microliters, um, which is pretty good compared to other tests that was there in the market. Uh, with regards to comparison to a traditional based uh, uh, methods using a plate or other uh, QPC system, uh, we have a good number of publications comparing both the platforms from our customers. And uh, the data is on par with a typical uh, QPCR system in the market. Great, thank you. Another question we have here asks, can you detect DNA and RNA viruses in one workflow? Yes, uh, that's definitely possible. Uh, so in one workflow, what you can do is you can have the sample go through a reverse transcription step. Uh, during that step, the DNA will just stay in the sample. And then once you have the RNA converted into the cDNA, then you can assay for both genomic DNA as well as cDNA uh, with different assays. Uh, so uh, we have done that in our uh, 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 workflow, and we have data to show that we are able to uh, do both DNA and RNA in the same workflow. Next question is a two-part question, and this question asks, what is sample input requirement for NGS library prep, and what would the library prep workflow be? Yeah, so for uh, the whole transcriptome um, application, the sample input requirement is 10 to 100 nanograms of uh, total RNA. Uh, with regards to workflow, we have two different formats of uh, process one, uh, like I mentioned, uh, it's for whole transcriptome. And second, if you have targeted panels, uh, we can do amplicon-based uh, sequencing as well. Uh, so we have two different uh, workflows for uh, the whole transcriptome. What we do is we have a bead-based column onto the chip, uh, which can capture uh, poly A mRNA. And then you can wash off all the remaining uh, stuff. And then once you capture the mRNA, then you can uh, do a reverse transcription, and then you can uh, do a whole transcriptome um, uh, amplification on the chip. Uh, the good thing about the, the workflow is uh, samples can be barcoded on the chip. So once it comes out of the chip, you can just pull a uh, cleanup, and then you can put it onto the sequencer. So that is for the whole transcriptome application. Uh, for the targeted um, panels, uh, again, uh, you can give us the targets and we can design uh, assays uh, with the uh, uh, overlaps that can be used to do uh, library prep for uh, targeted amplicons. So we have both the formats that goes onto our uh, chip. Great. Next question asks, how easy is it to manually load the chip? Yeah, I think that's a very good question. So uh, if you uh, look at the cartridge or the chip, uh, it, uh, when you look for the first time, it may uh, look very daunting. Uh, but if you are very used to uh, using a eight channel pipetter, uh, then it's pretty uh, easy. Then once you get a hang of it, uh, then it's pretty easy. Uh, I would like to say that most of our customers, uh, they prefer to use eight channel pipetter to load the uh, samples and assays. Uh, but having said that, uh, we have also automated uh, uh, loading. Uh, uh, we have an app note from Integra Biosciences uh, recently that uh, they can use their uh, liquid handling system to load uh, samples and assays. And on top of that, uh, most of our customers have also uh, implemented scripts in, uh, in platforms like Hamilton, TCANS, uh, and all other liquid handling system to load uh, samples and assays onto this kind of uh, uh, microfluidic cartridge. Great. Our next question here asks, does it support customized pathogen detection in our samples? 
Yeah, definitely. I think I did mention that we do offer a service to design uh, new assays. So if you have some uh, pathogens that's pretty unique for you guys, we can definitely design assays and uh, implement on our chip. So that, like I mentioned, the way to think, this is kind of an open platform. Uh, so any assay that you already uh, have it working in your lab or any assay that you need, uh, both can be implemented in these uh, uh, microfluidic device. Great, thank you. Next question here. What is the approximate um, purchase price of the X9 cartridges? So I think that's something uh, is pretty uh, variable. It depends on the the samples and asset throughput needs. Uh, I would probably uh, reach out to the customer and we can talk with our uh, marketing folks. Great. I have another um, question in regards to price um, and regarding implementing the system for um, phytosanitary applications and cost of assay creation service. Yeah, again, so uh, that the cost actually depends on the number of assays and how difficult uh, it's, it's to design those kind of assays. Uh, so uh, after this meeting, we can definitely reach out to that particular customer and uh, work with them on the cost and how much it, will it cost to implement uh, the system. Yeah. Great, thank you. We have time for a few more questions here. So I'm going to ask this next one. You mentioned that one can also perform whole genome sequencing using IFCs. And can you please elaborate a bit more on this? Yeah, so the uh, whole uh, uh, genome sequencing is more for a single cell application. So we have a, a, a chip that can do whole genome amplification from single cells. And then from there, you can make library prep out of that, and then you can do uh, sequencing. Uh, so it's more uh, tuned for a single cell application. Great, thank you, Naveen. It looks like we have time for one more question here, so I'm gonna wrap up with this one. And um, this question says, I've used a qPCR tool that only requires a total reaction of one microliter. If I'm not mistaken, the equipment is made in Korea and the company lent it to the lab at Bogor Agricultural University. My question is, is the working principle of the tool the same? And what makes this tool different in, in its microfluidic system? Okay, I'm not very sure on the uh, system that's being mentioned here uh, with regards to one microliters, uh, but what I can say is, uh, uh, if that is a system like that, uh, how we might be different is uh, we take that uh, uh, sample and we split into multiple small reactions. So we can assay more targets per uh, sample. So that's that's where probably we might be differing, uh, but I have no idea of what the system is about. So uh, again, we can uh, reach out to that customer and talk to them. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, we're going to go ahead and wrap up there today. So thank you, Naveen, again for your time today and your important research. We would also like to thank LabRoots and our sponsor, Standard BioTools, for underwriting today's educational webcast. Before we go, I'd like to thank the audience for joining us today and for their interesting questions. Questions we did not have time for today and those submitted during the on-demand period will be addressed by the speaker via the contact information you provided at the time of registration. This webcast can be viewed on demand and LabRoots will alert you via email when it's available for replay. We encourage you to share that email with your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. Until next time, take care everyone. Bye.